Hi there, my name is Laura and welcome to my channel Aquamarine 18. I'm here with my second ever detailed deck review, this time with a Oracle deck. As you'll know from the title of the video, the deck that I'm going to be reviewing is the 100 Ink Animals Oracle deck. And this deck is by Jessica Gowling, as you can see if the camera will cooperate. So this is a self-published deck. It's available in print at the time of this filming on Etsy. And I picked this deck to review um, for a few reasons. One is just that I really like this deck a lot. Um, folks who know me a little bit or have seen me commenting around YouTube or making videos will know that I really like nature and animal themed oracle decks in general. And this is one that I like very much. Um, the other reason that I wanted to make a, a review of this deck is that I actually can't find any videos uh, about this Oracle deck on YouTube at all. I think I've seen it in a few um, videos that are kind of more general, here are some Oracle decks that I like type videos, um, but I can't find any reviews or unboxings or first impressions or any um, video on YouTube that um, features this deck. And I think that it is a great deck for a whole number of reasons, and it's a deck that's in print. So I think it's very much kind of worthwhile, I guess, to um, share this review to um, bring attention to this deck for folks who might be interested in working with it. Um, this deck is not new to me. I received it as a Christmas gift from my grandmother, um, so back in December. Um, I did give um, a little bit of a wish list, so it was not a shockingly um, on-point guess from grandma. She had a little bit of um, suggestions to work with, um, but I was very happy to, um, to receive it. So I want to talk a little bit first about um, the project, I guess, involved that the deck comes out of. Um, I'll work through the guidebook and then flip through the cards at the very end. So as you can tell probably from the title of the deck, the 100 Ink Animals um, Oracle Card Deck is a 100 card deck. It is the largest deck that I own in that regard. Um, in terms of the most cards. The card size itself is, is not so large, um, but it's 100 cards. And the project that this deck came out of was a project by the artist wherein she drew 100 animals over 100 days. And so she featured them um, online, um, sharing the artwork that she had done, and the deck ended up being a Kickstarter. I did not back the Kickstarter, I missed it, um, so I got it later. Um, but that's how it was funded and started. Um, and so the deck comes with a guidebook. It's a nice guidebook, I think. It's not too big, but it's definitely bigger than a little white book um, by quite a bit. And so the artist and the author of the guidebook are both Jessica Gowling, so same person, one creator. Uh, and she talks about in the guidebook that this project, she writes in her note to the reader, began as an accountability exercise for my art practice. I took on the daunting task of illustrating 100 animals in 100 days in order to learn more about the subject that fuels my creativity and to further my draftswoman skills in ink. And she talks a little bit about picking um, different animals that were, you know, a challenge to illustrate, animals that were her favorite, animals that were suggested to her by other people. Um, and so coming up with this, um, this 100 animals. And I will say, um, in addition to this guidebook, this guidebook comes with the deck. There's also available on um, her Etsy, which I will link the deck below. Um, there's also available a separate book that is a larger, um, like a physically larger book with larger illustrations of all of the animals in it that comes separately. I think the, the book is $25, $20, something like that, Canadian. Um, I don't own the larger book, um, but it is also in print and available. So she describes the um, first main section of the deck as a gentle introduction to cardomancy, the art of divination through cards. And something that I think is really great um, about this deck is that I think it could function really well for someone who's just 
um, getting interested in oracle cards and is maybe looking for a first deck. The guidebook is set up with a lot of information in terms of even you know different styles of shuffling, right? So real beginner information that is really valuable if you're not quite sure um, how to proceed, but you know that you're interested. So there's sections on how to prepare for and perform readings, creating a quiet space, choosing what kind of spread you'll perform, preparing your mind, setting your intentions, and shuffling, and so on. She gives um, something that I think that would be really useful, um, again, in particular for beginners, is a section on examples of one and three card types of questions you could ask. So we have different um, you know, uh, prompts that you could ask to have a one card draw or three. She has sections on reversals um, and suggestions of how to read a reversed um, a reverse card in general as well as reversed keywords for each of the animals. Um, it's I think it's always entirely optional. I do read reversals with some tarot decks generally with uh, I'm more likely to read reversals with Marseille um, or Pip decks and I'm also more likely to read reversals in spreads that don't have specific positions. I don't read reversals with oracle decks. I have some oracle decks that have instructions for that and some that don't. This one has instructions for reversals. I don't, it's not something that I need, I think, in terms of how I work with these cards, but it, you know, it could be. It's a perfectly valid thing to do and it's useful that it's there. Um, there's information on cleansing and recharging your deck with various kinds of suggestions here um, and a brief kind of introduction as well to um, oracle cards in general, suggestions of how you could work with, um, work with oracle cards, work with this deck in particular, and oracle cards in general. Something, there's a couple of things that I really like about the way um, that the book is written. I'm just finding the piece that um, details this. One uh, is that it's a, a gender neutral deck very much for the most part. Um, this is something that I've talked about before in terms of inclusiveness and inclusiveness of language um, and how much I appreciated in, for example, the Numinous Tarot that all of the figures throughout the deck were referred to by gender neutral pronouns, singular they and them. This deck actually does that. There is, there is a human card, um, which depicts a human, but all of the other cards in the deck are non-human animals and still the creator has taken the time to note that she has explicitly chosen gender neutral language for the most part. So she writes that, the use of gender specific language felt unnecessary unless the sex of the animal was pertinent to the information being shared. So there's the odd um, kind of reference in the guidebook where, um, you know, the animal in question is a species with um, significant sexual dimorphism, for example, where the um, male and female of the animal species look very, very different. There are points where that, that kind of information might be mentioned in the book, but in general, gender neutral. You may notice that this volume was intentionally written with the singular pronouns they and them throughout. So all of the animals. Something else that I like about um, these cards that the creator mentions in her book is that the illustrations for me really capture um, the personality of the kind of individual animal she's drawing. They're not, you know, they're, they're black and white, so they might look at first glance like they're going to be kind of um, scientific studies of each animal, and they're really not, and she goes out of the, the way to point out that they're really not, right? She says that um, these drawings are more so unique portraits than they are scientific references. She capitalizes each animal's name, um, speaking of them as individuals, which I think is great. Uh, the other thing that I really liked in this deck that I think, um, you know, something that I struggle with in Oracle decks a little bit, um, something that I look for is kind of the balance of how much the Oracle deck is book dependent, right? 
So how much of a message is on the card itself versus how much message is in the guidebook suggesting that you need to turn to the guidebook each time you draw a card, for example. And so we'll see these cards just have single keywords on each one. The book has more information, but she's specifically really thought about how this deck is going to function for the person who is using it. You know, is, is that person going to go to the guidebook? Are they not? Um, what, how is someone going to interpret a keyword when all that's on the card is the animal, the animal's name, and one word, right? And so she talks about looking to um, dictionaries and thesauruses, for example, right? For meanings and synonyms of the keyword as a way of going um, deeper into the meaning of the keyword. She talks about ways that you could um, work with the guidebook or not. So she writes that the Oracle deck can ultimately be used without a guidebook as readers can simply rely on their knowledge of language. A dictionary or thesaurus can also be used as references. So for each card, and I'm going to flip through the cards. Um, I always say I'm going to do things quickly. And I never do. Um, I'm going to try to flip through the cards quickly. There are a hundred of them. For each card, and they're in alphabetical order, for example, starting with aardvark, you get one word, devour, here. But when you go to the guidebook, you get quite a bit more. So for aardvark, you get, and for each animal, you get one, um, one page, which has information about the animal's behavior. Sometimes it mentions things like diet or where they live, uh, nicknames, what they do that really gives a good insight into why the creator chose the keywords, or she calls them power words, keywords for each animal that she did. Um, obviously, those of us who work with animal energies will have our own kind of associations that we think of um, when we think of particular animals, but the guidebook does a really good job of, of connecting those dots in terms of the creator's own thought process. But I also think that because the keywords are just, just a single word on the card, you can allow your own um, process to kind of take, take you where it will without being kind of totally bound to interpreting the different animals the way that the creator does, if that makes sense. So again, each one will have the name of the animal in the book with its keyword beside. So there's Aardvark Devour. It will have information about the animal. And then at the bottom, it will have both upright and reversed keywords. So to give an example in terms of kind of amount, on the card aardvark devour, for upright keywords in the guidebook, we get devour, ravenous, destructive greed, intense enjoyment, using up resources. Then for a reversed meaning, we get a kind of reversal of those traits. Calculated, sustainable, use, use or distribute equally, planning for future rations. So it's really, really well thought out, I think. Um, and the amount of work that has gone into this, um, you know, there's a hundred animals, right? Most um, animal oracle decks that I own um, or that I've seen have closer to like 40 to 45. So this is, this is double the amount of, you know, research and time and thinking and keywords. And I think it's really so well done. The other thing that I really like about this deck, and I think part of it is because the deck has a hundred cards, you can have a lot of animals that you don't necessarily see in other animal oracle decks. There's a really good, um, and I haven't kind, of, I haven't kind of put the cards in different piles to to see exactly what the balance is here, but there seems to be, in my experience working with this deck, a good geographical range in terms of animals. There are animals from all different kinds of climates. Um, there are fish and insects and birds and mammals and reptiles, um, you know, really, really wide array. There are animals in this deck that I see every day almost you know, where I live. Um, and there are animals in this deck which I had never heard of. There are actually quite a few, um, you know, surprisingly like larger animals in this deck. Inevitably, you're not going to have heard of kind of every every insect, for example, but, but there are some animals in here, mammals even, that I had never, ever heard of. 
Um, so that was kind of interesting because when I would get those animals, it kind of sends me on a little bit of a um, research mission, you know, even if only to Wikipedia or somewhere like this to see um, photographs of the animal if, if they're there and so on. Um, really interesting. I used this um, deck, and I've talked about this deck once before in this context. Um, I used this deck for my year ahead spread that I did around New Year's time for 2019, where I drew one tarot card and one oracle card for each month for 2019. And so um, for the oracle deck, I used this one. So I had one animal um, for each month. And they're great. So I'm going to flip through um, the cards. Just give me one second um, while I run and get a drink again, and then I will flip through the 100 um, ink animals and then share final thoughts. Okay, that's better. I made this really good iced tea um, yesterday that has hibiscus and um, I think beetroot and apple and maybe some different berries in there. Really, really good. I feel like I've been talking a lot the last couple of days. I'm just mm. okay. So back to uh, back to the flip through here. I'm gonna have to separate these cards into a couple of stacks um, to be able to flick through them. Um, before I do that, I guess I will show um, the cardstock in the backs. The cardstock for this deck is playing card. Um, it's a linen. Um, it's a linen kind of finish. Um, flexible. It's it's like a bicycle playing card, and they are quite small um, in size. The backs are fully reversible, and they look like that. They're really beautiful. Um, the backings actually. And I'm not necessarily always a fan of um, playing card stock like this for. Uh, an oracle deck necessarily, but I think it's important in a deck that's this large, right, with a hundred cards, to make it functional to shuffle. This is a really thick, <laughs> this is a really thick deck. Um, I think it wouldn't work as well if it was, you know, a larger, more typical oracle size card, um, or if the card stock was too rigid. So I think they made a good choice. I don't riffle shuffle, but I think that you Mm. I think that you probably could riffle shuffle this deck. Um, it would take a little bit of um, work, um, but possible. So we'll flip through the cards here. I kind of tried this earlier to see the best way to get the webcam to cooperate. So we've already seen Aardvark. Come on. Aardvark. Devour, Arctic Fox, Cold. Maybe I won't read them all out. And the medium is, is ink drawings, ink pens, as the 100 ink animals title suggests. Beavers are very persistent. can see like just the way that the, the bird is walking you know there's a real kind of sense of personality to a lot of these don't often see a camel it's nice stamina makes sense there for sure copybaras I love I love to watch on YouTube um, capybaras swimming. I find them really amusing to watch. <laughs> um, have like great big guinea pigs. And I've alphabetized the cards. They are alphabetized in the guidebook as well by animal name to make them easier to find so they're not numbered or anything like that I 
I like the big ears of the fennec fox. I think they're really fun too. So you can see you've got birds and insects and fish, rodent, amphibian, mammal, goose aggressive. This one, this one kind of made me laugh. I don't know if geese are just aggressive as a general rule or what, but growing up um, near where my family lived, there's a kind of, um, it's called the animal farm, but you can go and see these different farm animals and you can, um, you know, feed bread to the ducks and so on. And, and some of them are kind of in pens like horses and that, and then other ones just wander around freely and you can meet them and pat them. And goose aggressive made me laugh when I saw it because at the animal farm, the, the ducks were fine, but the geese, because they expected everyone coming through the door to have, have bread or something like this, the geese would like chase you. And when you're little, um, you know, little child and the goose is like as tall as you, terrifying the geese. Um, but we see the Canada goose like this um, all the time where I live. And they will sometimes be aggressive as the keyword suggests. I see there's a heron in the park near where I live often. They're so beautiful. Human, the keyword for human, consciousness. And I really like, I don't know if you can see that the human has an animal uh, tattooed on her arm, a bird, and I think one on on the leg as well. So it's the first pile. <laughs> uh, it's a time consuming flip through for a hundred cards, right? Uh, let's get back into the center here. Oh my goodness, okay. Lemur. Rest is a nice keyword for lion. Often lion is, you know, brave or, or um, you know, regal, things like this. Rest is a rest is a nice one, I think. Magellanic? I have not heard of that one, but he or she, they seem to be a baby penguin of sorts. I see moose where I live sometimes too. Not not so much like right where I live in the in the city, but around um, areas that we might go camping. Um, there, they can they can be aggressive as well. Um, you don't want to be chased by one. Solidarity is one of my favorite words. So p pangolin. Maybe we'll look up pangolin. I like to look up the few that I've never heard of, and this is inevitably going to reflect um, my geography and where I've grown up. Maybe some viewers are like, oh, pangolin, that's, that's everywhere. You know? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Um, but it's one that I had never heard of before I got, um, I got this deck. So pangolin, protect. He looks, a, they look a little bit like um, armadillo but not so round in the picture. So pangolin for protect, the guidebook says, this animal has a layer of protective keratin scales covering their entire body. 
Pangolin's name comes from the old Malay word pangoling, meaning one who rolls up. For they tuck their nose to their chest and curl into a ball when threatened. Their protective adaptation has ironically hurt them since the desire for their scales has made them the most trafficked animal in the world. Pangolin needs you to keep yourself safe from harm or injury. Take certain precautions and avoid harmful situations in order to prevent bad things from happening. Employ trusted ways of safeguarding yourself from negative influences or people. Security and confidence can only grow when they are free from dangers and threats. Pangolin. You see the guidebook gives a lot um, in terms of context and why the keyword protect would be chosen for this particular animal. But I think that the keywords in the deck are, are well chosen and as the creator suggests, you could very much um, just work with the deck on its own without the guidebook. So the guidebook does, it comes with the deck. So um, for a deck like this, I do like to work with it, but lots of resources. You could also always research the animal too. Peacock sensual. Pig. Pika or Pika? I hadn't heard of this one either. Polar bears can be very vulnerable in terms of global warming, so that makes sense. Porcupine is another one that we see um, where I live. Um, and I like this picture of the porcupine. Pudu, this was one of the ones that I received in my um, year ahead spread that I had never heard of before as well. Raccoons I see very often. Sometimes they're getting into trouble digging in the garbage. And this is, like, I really like, you know, this raccoon kind of looks like the ones when you catch them digging, trying to get into your garbage can outside and they look at you in this cute, you know, way that they've been caught um, doing that. The other thing that's great about this deck, I don't have any other animal deck and I don't know that I've see, even seen one. Another animal deck that's black and white. Um, and on the one hand, you know, animals come in such beautiful array of colors, you wouldn't think to have an animal theme deck be black and white, but I think if you like to work with tarot and oracle decks together, with multiple decks together, the black and white is really nice because it really looks fantastic beside any other deck as a kind of neutral color scheme. The size is also nice because it's great to travel with because it comes in the box that's very sturdy. Um, so a kind of travel sized oracle deck. Is nice to have. And I find the keywords in this deck as well are quite balanced in terms of, um, they're not, you know, it's not an affirmation deck. They're all not necessarily words with positive, you know, initially positive connotations. Um, but even those words that have kind of more negative connotations on first glance, um, you know, I don't feel like the book is suggesting at all for example, that there are like good animals and bad animals or anything like that. Even the ones, you know, that have a keyword that doesn't um, seem like a positive thing on first glance. It's not 
um, like vilifying that animal or anything like that, which I appreciate um, as well. You know, each one has has their place and um, I think is treated respectfully. So um, this is the 100 ink animals. Maybe I'll just shuffle, um, give it a shuffle. And they shuffle well, I mean, as playing card stock does, um, they slide, you know, really, um, really, really smoothly, beautifully. Um, they shuffle, we'll just shuffle to have a final message to round out the stack review. Okay, so the final card that we have, sardine, and the keyword for sardine is betray. Here's the sardine. So we'll see what sardine says for us. Sardine Dory is abnormally aggressive and unapologetically harms others within their own school. Random attacks on each other occur with the intent to loosen or dislodge scales on another fish, creating a quick and easy meal. In the face of a predator, Sardine Dory bites other fish's fins simply to increase their own chances of escaping faster. Wow. Sadly, Sardine Dory harms others to get ahead. They act selfishly in the moment, unafraid of potential consequences. This creature hurts those that they spend the most time with, and despite living and working together, they will always choose themselves over the other. Sardine reminds us to be cautious of whom we cooperate with and ensures that neither party hurts the other with self-absorbed goals. Upright message is betray, low moral standards, violation of trust, violation of confidence unsupported in a time of need, reverse keywords are trustworthy, dependable, unswerving in allegiance, reliable during difficulties. So I feel like, you know, the sardine card then in terms of um, betray is really talking about, um, you know, behavior under pressure, you know, um, emphasizing the way that um, the sardine will kind of um, sabotage the others if it means that it will be able to survive, right, or to, um, you know, feed itself when it needs to. Um, so kind of... Um, yeah, I'm going to say lashing out because lashing out kind of implies a, a kind of judgment here, right? And we can't, I don't think we can kind of ascribe, um, you know, moral weight to a fish's behavior, obviously. Um, but it can prompt us to think about um, how we act under pressure and whether or not when under pressure we kind of perhaps maintain the standards of behavior and attitudes um, towards others and integrity towards others that that we would display when we're not in a not in a time of pressure or crisis right and that kind of consistency so there's our message sardine mindfulness um, about behavior under pressure a good message so that's the 100 ink animals oracle deck and guidebook written and illustrated by Jessica Gowling and it is one of my favorite animal themed oracle decks it has a hundred cards um, the illustrations are just beautiful um, the keywords are open-ended enough um, but simultaneously specific enough to be functional without the guidebook and the guidebook contains a ton of information on working with Oracle cards that I think would be really helpful for a uh, beginner. And I think, you know, someone who's not a beginner would, would um, get just as much out of the deck as well. So that's my review of the 100 Ink Animals Oracle deck. I hope um, it was interesting um, and yeah, that you enjoyed seeing the deck. So um, let me know if you have this deck, let me know what you think of it and how you've worked with it um, or what your thoughts are or what you look for in an animal oracle deck. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.